Are you feeling stuck in your health? Unable to make progress despite your very best efforts? Same. Just same. I have felt overwhelmed, practically paralyzed by all the conflicting advice that is out there. But I do think there is a secret, some magic, if you will, uh, to overcoming the decision fatigue that keeps us from our goals. And, and you probably already know what it is, don't you? I think you do. But hold on to that thought. I kind of want to show you how I have made some strides towards my fitness goals and by proxy, my health over the past several months. Okay, getting started is the biggest hurdle, right? You may feel like you need to research the ever living out of all of the different approaches, or you have to mine out the perfect plan, the most ideal equipment or the proper mindset before you can just launch into a fitness routine. And I'm going to call it a fitness routine because I feel like that's sort of where my brain has been going here lately. Maybe you spend a few hours scrolling through Pinterest, just pinning all of the different like workout sets that you could possibly do and you're inspired and motivated by all of these things. Or you hop onto Amazon and you search through all of their at-home equipment thinking, if I just bought this piece of equipment, all of a sudden, all of my fitness goals would just magically fall into place. The pressure to get there from the jump is overwhelming. It's not expected by anybody outside of your own self, or at least my own self, but it's overwhelming nonetheless. The internet is loaded with armchair experts, professionals, and even licensed doctors giving us all the shoulds we need to follow. I would spend hours consuming this information, not all at one time, obviously. It was just like little snippets all along the way. I would think that, that is the key. That's what I need to do in order to achieve health. And health was on a pedestal for me. But then I would promptly put that information into the brain and do practically nothing with it. When I started following a healthy diet back in January of 2016, I was so excited. I felt so much challenged by the new information that I was consuming. It was sort of fresh for me. I know it wasn't fresh for everybody, but it was fresh for me. And I've always been somewhat of an information junkie. So when I heard this new profound concept to me, I took that and ran to the ends of the internet and back filling my brain to capacity. I knew I needed to eliminate garbage from my life. I needed to be mindful of how much protein I was eating because that was not enough. And I also really needed to understand what fueled me. There was a lot of trial and error in that period, but after a few weeks, I figured it out and I ran with it. I didn't wait to have everything all figured out. I just was able to start at the beginning, practice, make mistakes, and then try again. I just dusted myself off anytime that I made a wrong choice for my body and try it again. And it's the diet for me just seemed to fall into place pretty quickly. And I didn't have to worry about it. It was okay that I didn't know what I was going to eat a month down the line, or even at the end of the week, it was okay that all I had to think about was the next meal or the next thing that I put into my mouth. That worked out beautifully. But how does someone who's capable of having a great attitude towards diet, um, like a willingness to practice and make mistakes and start messy, how does a person who, who starts in that realm with diet not have the ability to apply those same character skills to exercise or fitness? Like, how is it that these two things don't tran like, why don't the skills transfer? Why don't they transfer? For some reason, I felt like with fitness, I couldn't start till I understood things fully or I had things all figured out or had some elaborate plan or some sort of elaborate routine figured out, but it's not routine until you do it consistently. It's just exercise seemed like an entirely cut off compartmentalized thing in my mind that I could not just accomplish by just starting messy. I couldn't start something unless I knew I was in for the long haul. I needed to be able to put it on a calendar and put it into a, you know, a designated box for months on end in perpetuity, if you will. I just, I couldn't do that. Well, all that was clearly not getting me anywhere. And then a couple years ago, my friend Neely from the channel Indigo Neely and I decided we were gonna do a weekly live stream, tons of fun. And in the very beginning, we thought, let's hold each other accountable for our fitness goals because we actually both had some goals that we wanted to work toward. Well, I, I didn't, uh, you can go back on all of these live streams and you can see how I would say things like, 
I'm going to try to work out three times this week. And then the moment those words would leave my mouth, they would also leave my memory. And I wouldn't come back to it until the following week and be like, oh, bummer, I totally did say that. Clearly accountability was not working for me. And I don't think that it really has. Um, it, it's just, it, I struggle in that department across many areas of my life. And diet isn't necessarily one of them, but for sure the fitness piece of it is. So if accountability in the form of reporting back on a live stream wasn't working, would being accountable to people in my daily life kind of like be a way to become accountable? Uh, no, not so much. No, a friend and I, um, a few or a couple of years back, we would go to a boot camp class together at the YMCA thinking like, this is great. Um, we both felt exhausted afterwards. It was, it felt like a great workout and we were doing it together. However, once there were a few bumps in the road, um, you know, like there were limited spaces in this class. So if there were a few bumps along the way, like, oh, the class is full up this week, we will try again next week it eventually like would just fall off because, oh, we didn't get there fast enough in order to register for the class or whatever the case may be. So after a few weeks of that, we just gave up and decided maybe this is not, this is not the thing. This juice is not worth the squeeze. What really changed for me is when I decided to switch up my own self-talk and say, what if I just show up today? What if I just show up for me for today? Just this one time, not long-term. This is not a permanent solution. This is a one-off scenario where I'm just going to show up for me for like three minutes. It doesn't have to be anything long. I'm just going to show up. I already had a rebounder in my garage and I had learned about lymphatic benefits from it about like, I don't know, seven plus years ago. And I knew it wasn't too boring for me. And that's another piece of the puzzle. If it's boring, ugh, ugh, gag me with a spoon. So I knew that I was also only calling myself to go for just like three minutes, not 10, not 20, not an hour, just three minutes, Lindsay. You can do that for yourself, right? You can, I, I know you can. And just to make it spicy, let's try to hold a plank for as long as you can, Lindsay. And obviously this is Lindsay talking to Lindsay, right? So maybe 30 seconds for a plank. Let's just try. That's all we have to do, try. Low expectations, easily attained goals that have small little hits of dopamine to make me feel like I've accomplished something by hitting these ridiculously small goals, right? Once I started bouncing on the rebounder, I hit the 10 minute mark in, in like no time. And I thought to myself, I should probably just go ahead and hit 15, just a solid 15 minutes that just feels right, I'm already here. Great, cool just starting with enough motivation to keep moving to the next milestone. Then it was time for planks. Cool, we're doing one plank as long as you can, Lindsay. If you hit 30 seconds, that feels good. So I set my stopwatch, I get in position, here we go, and we're doing it. I glanced down at my stopwatch, which is a way different thing than a timer, right? It, it's like, how long can you go? Not, you only have to last until this moment. So I looked down and, oh, we're past 45 seconds. Amazing, let's keep going. I've still got something here and I wind up doing a full 90 seconds on the plank situation. Amazing, great. We did three times the amount I wanted to get done on a plank. We did five times the amount just by showing up and saying these goals have to be small. For the rest of the month, I did my best to show up for me. Not for a long time, just for short little blips. And I stuck with the rebounder for 15 minutes per day and holding a plank for 90 seconds for as my baseline. Like that was my minimum. Like that's all you have to do in order to call yourself successful for today. I added in some basic body weight exercises after that. They didn't have to be anything special or fancy. And my husband and I had gotten back into our habit of doing an evening walk, which that, that I tell you is just a fantastic way to enjoy your life after dinner. I already owned some resistance bands. And so after proving to myself that I could show up messily for myself, I decided to add the bands into the mix. So you see how this is working. James Clear talks about habit stacking in his book, Atomic Habits. And um, there's like a lot of different nuggets of information and wisdom you can draw from the book, Atomic Habits. And they're not new information pieces, but they are things that clicked in my brain when I did read that book. And so I kind of cling to those every now and then. I started just adding one extra little thing on top of the next in order to prove like, hey, you've already shown up for yourself, just this tiny little bit extra. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, but also you're already kind of here. So, I mean, just, just, just take a step over that little line. You don't have to put like your whole foot, just a toe, just come across that line, just one little toe. 
That's all you got to do. Gosh, does that feel so much more attainable. So I started using those bands a lot more regularly and look at me, winning with little increases on my simple routine. And it had become routine at this point. I was no longer trying to um, trying to just like get motivated to go out to the garage. It was now habit. There was no thought process put in. I decided at the beginning, we're just going to try. And then I continued to live out that decision that I made one time every day. Now there were a couple days that would fall off because we either had vacation or something happens or, you know, you can't, you can't sit there and account for every little thing that's going to happen. Right. But just saying, dust yourself off and get back up again. One of the biggest things that I've learned from this experience is to keep your expectations low. Instead of aiming for perfection, focus on just doing something, anything. That's all I focus on. Just try. I broke free from my analysis paralysis, all of the shoulds. I'm not here yet. I should be there. I shouldn't be this place in this place. No, I'm not overthinking this anymore. We're just putting on some clothes. We're going to the garage and we're going to bounce because we enjoy bouncing. That's what we're going to do. It wasn't about having the perfect workout. It was just about building the habits to be consistent. In all of this, here are some of the lessons that I've learned by being consistent. Number one, small steps matter. It's better to do a little bit consistently than to do a whole lot sporadically because those small little changes, those small little steps, they do build up over time. Number two, enjoyment is key. Choosing activities you enjoy makes it more fun for you. And that means you're going to stick with it in the long run. And I mean, I guess like if, if you enjoy being beat up by a workout, like that's true enjoyment for you, then I suppose that counts too. But I mean, I, I guess I do kind of prefer to like, feel like I've done something. It's, you know, enjoyment is key. Number three, no equipment, no problem. It doesn't matter if you don't have like the right gear or the best equipment on the planet or no budget for equipment. Let's talk about that for a split second. Like sometimes there's just no extra monies just lying around for us to go out and buy a Smith machine or some sort of a weight rack or to buy a treadmill or any of those things. Like no money for no equipment is not the problem here, right? We don't need any of the fancy equipment to get started. Body weight exercises are fantastic and effective. Number four, listen to your body. Pay attention to the way that your body is feeling. I don't mean like heart feelings. I mean like physical feelings, right? It's okay to wake up one morning and say, Ooh, if I do that, I'm going to injure myself, adjust your routine accordingly, and then get back to it as soon as your body is prepared for it. It's not really an excuse as long as you use this particular lesson properly, like put it in its proper place, right? But it's okay to listen to your body. Number five, Keep the pressure low. I just said this already, didn't we? But it's really important for me. I found that aiming for perfection is the problem. Instead, I'm going to aim for progress and just showing up is a victory. Number six, consistency builds confidence. It's kind of a crazy thought, but the more that you show up for yourself, the more confident you feel, and then you feel more confident in your ability to continue to show up for you because you've got the confidence. It's, it's, it's circular. It's a loop. I don't understand if the chicken or the egg came first, but it helps. Number seven, celebrate those small wins. Now I'm not talking about like going off and having a party or buying yourself a whole new wardrobe or buying yourself anything really, or eating anything really. It, it's just like just noting and acknowledging and being proud of yourself for those little things that you've continued to do for yourself. Um, if you look back and you say, wow, a week ago, I was this person and now it's only you know, I'm at today I'm this person and there's a dramatic shift, whether it's in your physiology or in your mindset or your emotions, like whatever it is, that's worth acknowledging. So do that. There's a bonus thing that I've learned and that's not to pin too much value on whether or not people are cheerleading you along. These little lessons and victories that you're going through and experiencing and learning and developing along the way are for you you know how far you've come. Don't place unattainable expectations on the people in your life to make a huge fuss over the things that you have done. That's not really fair to them. This is the time where you have to be not only participant, but coach and cheerleader for yourself. I don't know what to tell you. Assume the new identity of being the person who shows up for yourself. And that's the big secret. That's it. Did you guess it?
I kind of feel like you probably did. You can't expect other people to be your source of motivation and accountability always and forever. It's not really fair to them in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Maybe it's different for everybody else, but you want these changes. You have to put in the effort. You want to improve your health. You have to show up for yourself.